So now I'm making, I'm getting ready to start the next step of my lampshade project. So this is the piece of the lampshade I cut out and this is what we want to cover with lace. So I made a template. I used wrapping paper, but you can use any paper as long as it's relatively thin. You could use um, wax paper, uh, dressmaking paper, anything you like really, but it, you're go going to have to use, you're going to have to stretch it and stick pins in it, so it needs to be relatively thin. So I just drew the outline of the shade and made a copy of its shape. So here's the cloth I'm going to be working on. When you make lace, there are several methods of making lace. You could make bobbin lace, which would be on a card which you stick pins in and then you use the bobbin to manoeuvre the thread and make a piece of lace. You can also make something like Carrick Macross lace, which is over net and over chiffon and then several layers of paper to, to, keep, to give it a little bit of body and you'd be working on the net and on the chiffon or limerick lace which you make over a net and there's also needle lace which is like Phoenician lace or carry or Kenmare lace and basically what you do there is you attach a thread on your base cloth and then you with a needle you actually work above this layer into the bits of, of, of thread that you attached. So you make a shape and then you fill that shape in. And then when the lace piece is finished, you can lift, you can cut all the threads off and lift it off and you have a separate piece of cloth. So with Irish crochet lace, we're going to take the motifs, pin them, and sew them onto this background cloth. We're going to then attach the different motifs to each other with chains or with whatever method you'd like. And then when it's finished, we will cut all the bits of thread that we attach, attach the motifs onto the, this cloth. We'll cut them all through and then we'll be able to lift a piece of lace. So this is poplin. It's a very thin cotton type cloth. It's got no stretch, no give. If you try to pull it, it doesn't move. That's important. You need, if you, any cloth you use, make sure there's no give in it. Because if there's give, your piece might not look regular and it might kind of distort. And the second piece of cloth underneath is blackout curtain. I use that, you can buy special material to do it but it costs an absolute fortune so I take my cloth make sure everything's covered I pin it together make sure it's nice and smooth I'm doing this to hold it together. So it's pinned down now, so the two pieces are joined together. I take my template and lay it across on my cloth. I make sure that I've got plenty of edges everywhere. And now I'll pin 
the paper to the cloth. Lace making is a very, very slow process and it's very laborious and you could spend many, many hours making a piece. That is why lace is so expensive and you don't really see much lace making going on anymore because it is slave labour in a way. If you work 70 hours on a piece and you charge minimum wage to whoever buys it, you can barely ask $700 or euros for a piece of work. Most people wouldn't be able to afford it. That's why it's nice if people keep the tradition going by making pieces for themselves. I don't really sell pieces, I only give them away. And the reason I do that is because I know how expensive it is. You've also got an added problem that people don't always know how to look after lace. And they could ruin it just by washing it once if they don't do it the right way. It's a passion really. In the old days, people would have worked together so there would have been a team making motifs and there would have been another team joining them up and making making the actual lace pieces. Everybody had a speciality and once you learn the basic st stitches, you end up being able to copy most flowers or attempt to at least. So now I've got this, my next step is I'm going to go around it with some cotton thread to outline it. So I'll use a double thread to make it a bit thicker. If anybody's interested in the history of lace making in Ireland, there's a very good program on YouTube called Hands. It was filmed in the 70s and 80s. And it's a lovely documentary on all different types of traditional skills. And one of them is on Irish lace. It's very, very interesting and it's definitely worth watching because the days described in those books are gone. And not to come back really. So what I'm going to do now is with a tacking stitch I'm going to outline the template. There's various ways of doing this. I'm doing it just so that I, I want the outline because I've got an idea on how I want to work this lace and what I want to make. Uh, you've always got to have a rigid edge on a piece of lace. So you can't finish it with just filling. It has to have some kind of border. And there's various ways you can do that. You could either make a chain out of your cotton, make a chain that covers the whole area and sew that chain on to the cloth. So you'd have an edge of chains. And so when you're making the joints between the motifs and, and the edge, you can just hook into that chain and use that as the edge. And then afterwards make a small solid edge. You can also crochet over cord and have a more rigid edge. On this one, I've got an idea of mixing Celtic knots 
with the motifs with flowers. So what I'm thinking of doing is making a solid edge made out of Celtic knots along the top and along the bottom. And so I won't need a solid edge because that will be the solid edge that I'll attach the motifs to. For this side and that side, I'm not going to make an edge because what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it in such a way that it will be nearly finished and I'll be able to turn the cloth round in such a way that I'll be able to join up the motifs here. So I might have a motif overlapping here, another motif overlapping here and then maybe another motif overlapping there. And what I'll be doing, I'll be making the chains between them so it's just, it'll be a complete round when it's finished. Once I've done the outline, I can take my motifs and I can arrange them and see what what pleases me because it's a lamp shade and it's in the round you can do it several ways you could have two facing sides three facing sides four facing sides or you could have a repeated pattern all the way around this is where you use your imagination and this is where the art comes in really it's the the most fun part really when you're designing the piece even now, I haven't got a completely clear idea on what I want to do. So my idea for the moment is I'll have a Celtic knot going across the top and dropping down, I'm going to make more Celtic knots so it will be divided into segments. And at the bottom, there'll be another Celtic knot kind of braid. What I want the lampshade to look like is I'm thinking in the, I've made very very Victorian looking ones but this one I thought I want to make it look 70s modern so it'll still be traditional lace but it'll be more It'll, it'll give a 70s feel so I'm not going to make a very very thick background and the flowers I'm sure you could we can make them look as though they're on a 70s drawing and I'm just thinking with the Celtic knots it it'll look quite spare it won't look very elaborate it'll be quite plain and I'm thinking of using a purple background for the cloth I've got a purple chiffon blouse I was thinking of incorporating pearls with the motifs and then having a very very slim gold stand just a very very plain I was just thinking just a like a pipe with a little circle I was just thinking very very spare very very 70s but with a kind of millennial twist But then again, I might start laying things out and I might change my mind, so don't count on what look, me doing that. But it is the way I'm thinking for the moment. I don't thread. So I'm using yellow as it's a very good contrasting colour on black. And that is the idea with the cloth that you're using to work on. You want it to contrast with the colour of the thread you're using in your lace. So black, dark blue, any dark colours.
They use blue traditionally, a kind of mid blue. This would be a traditional colour for working on lace. It's supposed to rest the eyes. I've also seen dark green used. But I just, we only have one small shop here in town that sells material and they don't really have much choice because a lot of it's old stock. Last time I was there, I even found some woolen flannel that must be nearly a hundred years old. It's a red flannel that people used to use to make underskirts from and it costs 18 euros a yard. It's 100% wool and it's a lovely lovely material. It's just the feel. I, I just love natural materials. It's just a feel. It's the same with lace. I just love touching lace because it just feels so so nice. It's one of the reasons why I would only use cotton. So I'm I'm edging this side, although I'm not going to be actually making a border here. So there'll be a border at the top and there'll be a border at the bottom, but there won't be a border on the sides. So this is only just a general outline so I know how big my piece needs to be. If I want to make a longer lampshade I have to respect the size at the bottom or at the top and then just lengthen it accordingly but I, I have to make sure that this or this is in the same proportion whenever I go to the charity shops I always look at the old lampshades because they're a handy project for lace making it's something that people can use And also, with the rings, you can actually make um, sun catchers because you've got a nice circle. You can make a nice piece of lace and hang it in the window. We've got horrible weather today. It's absolutely dreadful out there. It's been raining all day. It's been a very, very wet month. It's not particularly cold, but you would like the fire every day. The next bit done. We've got a bank holiday this weekend because they're going to change the clocks. I hope it's the last time they ever change it. I prefer the lighter evenings. It gets dark at four in the winter and that's horrible. When you've got to commute to work, you'd never see daylight. 
you'd be travelling in the dark all day. I still have to make some videos on the more complicated motifs from the colour. They do get gradually more and more difficult towards the end. And some of them are just pure guesswork. I just tend to look at what they're trying to achieve and then do it where I think it needs to be done. Some of them are not very precise. So we're nearly there. And then the fun can begin. That's when you start enjoying yourself. This is just donkey work. I'll be making videos as I work along because one of the problems I have when I make videos, if I make a project, is showing the finished work before you show how to do it. And a, one piece could take you maybe a hundred hours to do, but Just making one motif and then filming it and editing it can take hours and then it holds you up and if you're trying to do it stage by stage you end up having to wait for something before you can step, carry on on the next step. Like with me, these more difficult motifs, I've made two of these and made one of these two and I've made three of those. So I want to make these on camera to show how to do it because this one is particularly difficult and so was this one. This one was a bit of guesswork and this one was also a little bit tricky. So I'm going to video them but in the meantime I want to carry on and finish the lampshade so I can move on to the next project. One of the things I'm thinking of doing, I've got... Um, a doll and I was thinking of making a dress for her when I was a little girl I only had the one doll and the only reason I wanted a doll was to make clothes for her I never was one to play with dolls as such but I did love making clothes I loved knitting crochet sewing and my doll used to be my model so I found a doll in a charity shop and I was thinking of making a nice dress for her completely out of lace. I've got lots and lots of motifs packed away that I've made over the years that are spare and I was thinking of incorporating them. One of the reasons I like traditional Irish crochet lace is because of its, its fanciness and its plainness at the same time. When I look at um, Russian lace, Russian crochet lace, it's beautiful. It's all the colours and, and shapes. But I do feel 
it's very very Russian in design I think um, the character of the country does get reflected in the art so I finished this here now I'm not too worried about it staying in because as I said I'll be working on the edges first so once I've got an outline that's all I need so now I take the, the paper off And now I can think about how I want to arrange my motifs. So I want to get an idea of how much coverage I've got. So I'm just going to first place the motifs in a random fashion so I can see how much area I'm covering so that I see if I need any more motifs. I think this is a nice pattern already. Oh, steer me. All I'm trying to find out is how much coverage I've got. I don't want the motifs to be too far apart. And I want to be able to arrange them in some kind of group, but I'm liking this definitely. It's nice and simple. And if I had the Celtic knot plait at the top and the Celtic knot plait at the bottom, it would be lovely. It'd be very simple. So what what I try to show in these videos is how to do it, not I'm not telling people they have to do it exactly at, like me. I'm just showing them how they can do it. Looks as though we've got more than enough here. So I'm going to spread these out a little bit more. That's not bad really. There's one there who needs one close to there. So that's not bad really. There's another way to go about it and I could make two different sides. So I'd have to find the middle and then divide that into two again and that would be a center line. And what I could do then is take this motif and put it as you can see I haven't sewn them together yet and I haven't done the ends yet I do that when I place them on the cloth so I could have that and then, or maybe, 
like that. And then maybe have stems coming out and I'll make it a kind of bouquet. So I'd have a little bouquet. And then maybe this big motif at the bottom. I think that looks too heavy. It would be better somewhere like that. See, I, if I overlap it here on this side, I leave a similar amount of space on the other side 